Hello, my name is Michael Lambert. Now, if you've been kind enough to watch my videos in the past, you'll know that I normally post on a Saturday morning. And uh, unfortunately this week, for various reasons which I won't bother you with, I was unable to post uh, uh, as usual. And so this is my uh, belated uh, Saturday video. And I think uh, I think it's it's, it's uh, what I have to tell you, I think uh, it will amaze you. I think this is really quite an amusing video. It's amusing in the in the way that one of those guys on YouTube or TikTok who uh, who has a, a brand new shiny Lamborghini and, uh, and wants to show it off by racing up and down the, the street and spinning it around and eventually bangs into a, a lamppost and uh, and writes it off and everybody thinks how is it possible to be that stupid it's that sort of stupidity I'm going to be be talking about now you know one of the things about modern life is that everything with uh, uh, with IT with the internet and computers has become and is constantly becoming simpler everything is much more much easier these days than it used to be you think about banking you think about paying bills you think about travel in particular I mean travel is so much easier uh, nowadays than it than it used to be I as it happens I used to go to France uh, uh, almost uh, well at least once a month uh, by road uh, for, for, for years and I used to use the, uh, the Eurotunnel and uh, towards the end I think what the way, the way things worked that you'd, you'd book it online and uh, that was very easy and then when as you arrived at the uh, uh, at the gate at Folkestone the uh, the number plate reg recognition thing would work and they your ticket would be printed out uh, automatically and you'd hang that on your windscreen and you would then uh, you might stop at the service station if you didn't you'd go on to uh, uh, to, to, to board on the train before it had to go through the the, the, the passport control the UK passport control, passport control almost never asked to see your passport and the French passport control was hardly anybody, hardly ever anyone there so you you just drove through and it was the simplest 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 thing uh, and you, you're on the train and then of course when you got to the other end you just drove off and you're in France you can go anywhere you like but that of course because of Brexit has all come to an end now a lot of people keep saying they say to me in my comments they keep saying just time to move on move on you know Brexit's all happened it's happened and uh, we have to sort of all work to work making a success of it and we all know of course that, that uh, Kistama is going to make a, a, a terrific success of it but it hasn't ended. There are more and more things coming in all the time, particularly with the uh, controls at the border. And, and, and I've, I've said I don't know how many times about how uh, the new border controls regarding goods coming into the country will affect food supplies. And we depend very heavily on the EU for, for food and the sort of chaos we're seeing at Sevington and, uh, and people being charged and without being checked and all the rest of it and people getting very cross about it. It's not working very smoothly. And, uh, and in addition, as far as uh, ferry passengers are concerned or people going on the train, it's becoming more and more complicated in stages. Later this year from November, anyone going to France uh, uh, via the, uh, the Eurotunnel or going from some bankers on the train or going from Dover will have to, uh, on arrival at the port, they will have to have their photograph taken, they'll have to have their fingerprints taken uh, and uh, produce their passport. Now this is uh, Quite a complicated procedure. It, uh, it's going to be quite time consuming and there's been a, a lot of concern about how it's going to be done. Now at the moment we're building a huge new facility at uh, Dover Eastern Port. That's where all the lorries come and go. There's not much space there because uh, you know the cliffs are behind it and the seas in the front of it. So I mean there's a, it's going to be a bit of a squash but anyway they're, 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 they're developing. They're building this great big canopy thing and uh, controls are all going to be uh, carried out by French border police and uh, and uh, so what is going to happen is that you're going to get to Dover after November and you're going to have to uh, in your car someone is going to approach you a French uh, frontier policeman he's going to approach you with a, a an iPad or something and uh, and you're going to, have to take your photograph each person in the car will have to take the photograph and fingerprints and check the passports and so on now this is going to be very very time consuming and uh, I think there's quite a lot of concern. I think the, um, the, the Kent, uh, Kent authorities, I think, are very concerned about it. And they, they even say that uh, it just, just isn't going to work. But anyway, I, uh, I saw an article in the paper about uh, 10 days ago, and it was in an I newspaper, and the uh, uh, headline was as follows. Holidaymakers could face 15-hour queues at Dover under UK Brexit border plan. 
Families will be advised to travel with supplies of water, food and nappies as UK prepares for the EU's entry exit system. Jams of up to 15 hours are being forecast. Now, now, now if you think about that, and suppose you get up early in the morning, you get up at uh, 6 o'clock in the morning to get to, to from wherever you are, you get to, on your way to, 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 to Dover, and you get to 20 miles out from Dover, you get the back of a queue. Huge queue going maybe from Canterbury to Dover. And you're then told you might have to wait for 15 hours. That's up until midnight. So you've got up at 6 o'clock in the morning to get there. You might have got up earlier, perhaps. And you're going to have to wait till midnight in a car. And I think between, I think I'm right in saying, between Canterbury and Dover, there's only one service station. And of course, if you've got tens of thousands of lorries and cars and buses on that road, then of course, a lot of them are going to want to use the services. The services are going to be chocolate block anyway. And I just wanted to, you know, you know, just to, to think about... How would it be? I mean, imagine, for example, you've got a family. They go on, on on a camping holiday in France or something, and you've got mother and father, and they've got a baby, and they've got two young children, maybe one seven, one nine. They've got granddad with them. He's coming as well. The car's full, and they and they have to wait in the car. It's maybe a hot, sunny day, and they've got to wait for fifteen hours. And. Uh, they brought plenty of water and plenty of food, so they can, they can, they can, they can, they can, uh, they won't starve. But you drink a lot of water, then we wonder what the consequences are. And and uh, and Granddad, he's maybe he's got prostate trouble or something, like lots of old men do, and perhaps he has to go quite often. And and, and maybe when he has to go, he has to go. And so maybe that's the nappies bit. Maybe maybe all the adults should be wearing wearing nappies because I think for almost anybody to wait. 15 hours without going to the loo, it's quite difficult. We already know that lorry drivers use the um, uh, the hard shoulder, and, and I think uh, I think the hard shoulder in that part of uh, uh, of Kent is known as the biggest lavatory in in, in Europe. Uh, but anyway, these people are all going to be sat in this car, and you've got two children that are probably a bit, uh, 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 maybe a bit uh, hyperactive, and you've got a baby that's going to want the nappy change, and you've got a father who wants to have a pee, and mother wants to have a pee, and you're just going to sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there and sit there. I, I mean, how's this going to work? And, and, and they're not the only ones. There are going to be thousands and thousands of people like this queuing for hours and hours and hours, 15 hours. And then when you get to the end, you get into this great big shed down at Dover before you get into the ferry and then some jobs worth, some uh, French, uh, uh, French uh, border policeman, he comes up with his iPad and he says, oh, we've got to photograph everybody and everybody's in a thoroughly bad mood as will be everybody he encounters in his job because everybody will have been waiting for hours and hours and he says oh yes don't take a photograph and father takes a photograph and gives him his fingerprints and then uh, granddad well he's not quite sure and he can't he can't get his head in the right place and he can't and he doesn't he wants to know why they're taking his his fingerprints because he's not a criminal and he 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 uh, he's grumpy about it and the children they're jumping about and the children uh, uh, they press the wrong button on the on on, on the uh, on the iPad because they're all excited and being silly uh, and then mother has to hers done and then the policeman says to we'll have to do the baby could you wake the baby up please because I need to photograph him and I need to photograph the uh, I need to fingerprint the baby because you see until now now, until we left the EU, uh, children could, could 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 travel on 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 the parents' passports, but not anymore. So any child, including babies, has to uh, have its own passport. So before you even set off, you'd have to get a passport for the baby. I don't know how you do about photographing uh, for the for the passport. And so after fifteen hours, and Granddad by now his 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 nappies will have been been leaking, and the backseat will be all rather smelly and unpleasant. The children will be rather. Uh, uh, annoyed about that and the baby will have needed its uh, nappy changing for the sixth time and everybody would be desperate for a pee and everybody would be desperate for some proper mood and to sit down somewhere to get out of the car uh, and they're going to be pretty cross, pretty angry it's, it's not going to be great is it? But that's not all here's a really funny bit Thousands and thousands of coaches. I think it's uh, something like 70,000 coaches each year go through Dover. Now, uh, in February and November, it's probably not that many. But uh, 
you know, July and August, they're going to be hundreds and hundreds every day. Now, of course, they don't want to cause unnecessary delays by having them going through the same route as the uh, uh, as the cars. So what they're doing in, in Dover Western Docks, which is the, uh, another part of Dover, which is about, about a mile away, they're, they're building a new facility. A new facility, and that's where the coaches will go for coach passengers to have their photographs taken and fingerprints and, uh, and passports checked and so on. And so you're going to get hundreds and some cases in this big car park, you'd maybe, maybe 50 coaches, each with 40 odd people on, all grumpy people who've been sat in a queue for, uh, for hours and hours and hours. And they're all going to have to uh, have their fingerprints done and their photographs taken and their passports checked. And I, I'm not quite sure, and I haven't been able to find out whether or not they'll all get off and go inside some facility, in which case there's terrific, terrific possibility of uh, people getting muddled up and getting lost and confused and so on, and absolute chaos, one would have thought. Or instead, whether they'll all have to stay on the bus, and since they'll have been on the bus for hours and hours and hours, that, um, uh, that won't please many people. If they do t- stay on the bus, I, I, I presume that one or two uh, French police would uh, would come on the bus and just gradually go through uh, one at a time, um, photographing everybody and taking their fingerprints and so on, which is going to be very time consuming and rather annoying. And I think uh, given that by then uh, a lot of these passengers are going to be pretty, pretty angry, there's going to be quite a lot of aggression, I would have thought. And how long is that going to take? Was well, it going to take an hour for each bus? I just thought people would go crazy by then. And whilst, you know, most buses might have a mix of ordinary people, who knows what, uh, you might have a bus full of old folks going going to France for a couple of days from a, from, a, from a nursing home or something, a special treat. I mean, how are they going to be taking it? And, and going back to our car, what happens if our, our, our grandfather in the back of the car who's wetting himself, what happens if he gets ill and he needs an ambulance and you're in a, in, in a queue for hours and hours and hours? But back on the bus, you know, what about if you've got people who've got learning difficulties and they find it a bit difficult when it comes to they're doing their fingerprints and uh, and having a photograph taken and they're all a little bit anxious and a bit excited and they wish they were at home and so on and, and they're all nervous. And what happens when you've got a, a, a coach full of, uh, a, a, of rugby club members who are going to, to Belgium for a laugh and they've loaded up a, a, a pallet full of beer which they've by that time drunk and they're all drunk out their minds and they're all rowdy and they're all aggressive and they're all... Uh, having a sing song and they're being asked to sit down quietly and behave themselves whilst they have their fingerprints taken. I mean, the the the, the, the potential for chaos, it, I mean, is almost unlimited. And here's the really good bit. This is this is really really good. The bus has to travel from Dover Western Docks to Dover Eastern Docks, which is about a, about a mile, and. Uh, Obviously, we have to make sure that nobody escapes from the bus during that journey. And so when all the passports have been checked and when all the photographs have been taken and the fingerprints have been taken on the bus, what's going to happen? The bus will be sealed. Just like they used to do in uh, in East Germany and West Germany you know, back in the Cold War be sealed so nobody can get off the bus and the only time those seals will be broken is when the French authorities give permission for them to be to be broken uh, once the bus is on the on the on the ferry and presumably they'd have to wait until it gets uh, it gets out out to sea otherwise people might 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 jump off and swim to shore completely bonkers completely and utterly bonkers and this is all this is all all these uh, french policemen all over all over dover checking everybody and uh, and uh, being blamed for holding everybody up and so on it's uh, it, it's all because we wanted to take back control of our borders that's what it was all about really and you know the more i think about this this utter chaos, this utter stupidity. I mean, this, what I've just described to you, we ought to do it. There's no way around it. I mean, that's part part of the deal. Uh, and we knew that when we when we uh, uh, decided to leave the EU. But, you know, when you think about it and you think about the total absence of any benefits whatsoever, except, except for a very tiny number of people 
people like Jacob Rees-Mogg and people like all these uh, Aaron Banks and so on, people got lots of money in tax havens and didn't really want the EU looking into it and had the connections and the power and the money to persuade politicians, particularly Tory politicians, the likes of, uh, 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 of uh, Johnson, and who would be able to use, who were able to use uh, useful idiots like uh, uh, Nigel Farage. And with the cooperation of the BBC, which is uh, sort of in, in very much a conservative uh, biased organization to give so much publicity that this whole whole brexit thing was just really a ruse so that uh, people who have the money in tax havens and people like as i say rhys mark who's uh, who's got an irish passport and his business is based in ireland and he can travel wherever he likes all over the eu and he won't be in any queues at dover he'll be going on a private plane but all these people they're the only ones who've benefited from from Brexit and the rest of us have to put up with this utter, utter chaos and madness and stupidity, increasing poverty. And it's just, just not right. And it will just make for a lot of unhappiness and a lot of stress and a lot of poverty. And uh, there is no, no way it's going to improve. And with a government, a prime minister, a new prime minister who is determined to make a, 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 a success of it, he's going to make it work who is going to sweep away Brussels red tape. I don't, he hasn't told Brussels yet, but he's going to sweep away all their Brussels, their Brussels red tape. Uh, and who won't even agree, won't even agree to young people being gay, able to go work in the EU for two or three years for work experience and, and for the Europeans to come, European young people to come to the UK and, uh, and get some work experience. Uh, and with a prime minister such as that, I mean, things are not going to improve. This whole border thing, which is just an example of the mess, you know, uh, it, it, it's going to be absolutely chaos. And at the same time, as I say, uh, uh, problems are brewing with uh, uh, with the importation of food because, as I said earlier, people are being charged for inspections and they're getting very cross about it because nothing's getting inspected. I think it's something like 5% of the goods coming into the country are being inspected, and yet everybody's being charged. And uh, as I've said so many times before, I mean, European food producers are simply not going to come to the UK. And if they do come, they'll send their, their rubbish they can't get rid of elsewhere or they'll overcharge us. And, uh, and there's nothing we can do about it. It's a terrible mess, as I end up saying it every week. But um, but anyway, I thought you'd be be interested in that. Uh, you know, everything I've quoted, it's all from uh, reliable sources and so on. And it's, uh, uh, although it un sounds unbelievable, it is, it is absolutely true. And so with that, if you've watched this far, as always, thank you very much indeed. If you haven't subscribed, I'd really appreciate it if you would do so. And uh, and so until until next time, thank you for listening and uh, bye for now.